Claire here today. So we're going to look at this today, which is the KVP versus contrast. It's a little confusing because the terminology when you talk about contrast, scale, it's, con it's just so similar that I get questions from students all the time. So I'm just, just going to dive into the slide that I have prepared over here and we will be able to dissect together what it means to have high KVP versus low KVP. So here, I'm going to show you what I have as student RGH, which is literally a summary. And it says, increased KVP, high KVP, many shades of gray, which is a long scale contrast. And it says smaller density differences between black and white, which is low contrast. What? And then let's continue. Decreased KVP is more black and white. It's a short scale contrast and it's a high contrast. Okay. Forget everything that I said. Let's look at this image. I want you to look at this. When there's 90 KVP, you can see that there's many shades of gray. And when you have 40 KVP, you have less shades of gray. So the first thing I want you to remember is we're gonna not we're not gonna talk about KVP. We're gonna talk about pancakes. So let's do this. KVP A get equal pancakes. And then I'm gonna say scale. So because when um, when you see student RDH, you're gonna see that we talk about low scale contrast versus short scale contrast. So scale, I'm gonna replace it to stack. So we're talking about a stack of pancake. You know, has nothing to do with real logic, but sometimes you have to use just use your brain in a different way to help you memorize things. That's wake up memory. So now we have those two concept and there's one more it's called contrast contrast i'm not going to really replace it because it's like how different the two are how contrasting there is so contrast you can imagine is something a b different from b so let's just uh, keep those in mind so we have kvp that turned into pancakes we have scale that turned into stack and we have contrast so when we say high kvp that means i have a lot of pancake pancake if I can spell that not package so I have a lot of pancakes so my stack is going to be high can you draw it so I have my awesome drawing over here okay you have a very high stack how many pancakes do you have about 15 of those over here was good so then you have low KVP that's a little that's little pancake that's not that many pancake but what i want you to think about in stack if you think about the stack is it short or is it long that's a short one right so i'm just gonna maybe draw five pancakes over here so you have a short stack versus a high stack. that's high kvp versus low kvp now the pancakes each layer of pancake represents a shade of gray so in a high stack, high KVP, you have many shades of gray. In a short stack, which is low KVP, you have less shades of gray. You go from dark, really, really dark, to white faster versus when you have high KVP, you go to dark to white um, much faster. Now, when they talk about contrast, they're talking about contrast between the pancakes. You know, is this one a lot darker than this one? Is this one darker than this one? That's what they're talking about. So let's just think about it. So we have a short stack. When you have a short stack, the contrast between each pancake is it gonna be high or low? Is this one gonna be very different from this one in color? Yes, it is. The contrast is high versus this one. Between this pancake and this pancake, is the contrast, is the color going to be very different? It's going to be less different than in the low KVP because the stack is longer. So you, we had many variations of gray. So the contrast is lower. I think you're starting to understand this. Follow me with this picture as well. We have 90 versus 40. One thing you can do is think of 
high. So 90 is obviously more, it's like 90 pancakes versus 40 pancakes, right? Or nine pancakes versus four pancakes. So you have more, okay? Each one of those represent a pancake to me. So you have many of them. Many of them, it means high stack. When you have a high stack, there's a lot of them and each one of them, there's less contrast between them. And when you have a short stack, like you can see here, there's not that many, you're gonna have, it's, a, it's called a low scale, because remember, stack equals scale, and then is it going to be high contrast or low contrast? It's gonna be high contrast. So, there's one more thing, and I think you understand the concept here, but stay with me because I wanna just, you to look at this too. So this is from actually a, a book that's called Radiology Science that's used by uh, radiologists, not just um, dental hygienists. This is actually even uh, more in depth, but I just wanted to show you this and to understand how they describe it. And we're gonna compare it to what we do in dentistry. So it says, um, change in KVP altered the penetration quality of the X-ray beam. Radiographic contrast depends on the quality of the X-ray beam. Increasing the KVP increases the amount of exit radiation through the, uh, going through the patient and decreases differential absorption. Higher energy X-rays are more penetrating and produce more scattered radiation by way of increased Compton interaction. I'm not gonna talk about Compton interaction. It's already uh, available for you as student RDH, but what it says here, when there's higher KVP, there is more energy. There's more amount of radiation that comes out of the X-ray tube, so more. High KVP is just more. I think it makes sense so far, right? Let's continue. The KVP setting is a primary controlling factor of radiographic con contrast. So when you think about contrast, you think about KVP, not amp amperage. How you're gonna memorize this? Well, if I was gonna draw or wake up memory, it would look something like this. So K sounds like a C, or C sounds like a K, whichever you wanna choose. So when you think about contrast, you think about the other letter that sounds like a C, which is KVP not amperage, it's as simple as this, K, C, or C, K, however you wanna just put it together. But for me, I just think about the sign, sound. K like C, and that's contrast. Or C like K, and that's KVP. You follow me so far? All right, so let's continue. Uh, figure 11-2, so this is what we're looking at here at the bottom. It says high KVP, have a long scale contrast. Remember, long scale is like lots of pancakes. So that's many shades of gray. And you remember one more thing we said, what about the contrast? Was it shorter, is that smaller, or is it larger? So the difference between each pancake, is it big or small? It's small. Why? Because we have many, many pancakes to go from dark to white. So it says smaller density between black and white. That's what we just talked about. I'm just showing you here another book that focuses just on radiology, not for dental hygienists, but for medical professionals who are studying radiology here. Okay, so let's jump to this. The number of density differences visible in the 55 KVP images is less than the number of density differences visible in the 75. Let's just look at the images. So this is 55 and this is 75. And the middle is 65. Okay, so let's think about through this again. So high KVP is lots of pancake, lots of shade of gray. The difference between one gray to another, the contrast is shorter, it's smaller. Versus one in A, you can see it's a short, and so it's a smaller, it's a less KVP. Uh, less KVP is a short stack of pancakes, so um, it's a short scale. And the difference between like white or, or two, two pancakes is pretty high. So let's look at the images and see what it actually means in an image to have short and long. So when you see um, low KVP, you can see that it's just like black versus white is white and is black over here. 
Yes, we have gray, but we have less gray. And a difference between the grays are very subtle. Versus look at the one at 75. Well, it's not really black versus white. That's why they call it many shades of gray. It's like gray, the one that's slightly darker than the gray, that's slightly darker, that goes towards the black, but not really, you know, that's what I mean. So, said that, 65 is kind of, you know, what they, this is actually our leg. It's kind of in between. Now, think about this application. When do you need a high KVP and when do you need a low KVP? So, when we go back to dentistry, let's think about it. You need a high KVP when you are diagnosing for bone abnormalities or for the periodontion. So you want to see all the variation there is. Okay, however, when you are detecting caries, you want to be black and white. We don't want subtle. We want to see, is it there or is it not? Because if it's there, I want to see some nice black areas that go through the enamel, the dentine, maybe even towards the pulp. So that's black and white. So when you are trying to diagnose for um, caries, you use low KVP. And when you want to use it for the periodontium, you're going to use a high KVP. Does that make a little bit more sense now to you? Um, it's just a terminology that is confusing us. So obviously we have our operatory and things are set to like molar, you know, we don't really barely touch the KVP settings. But let's say we detected a carious lesion, then maybe we might need to do a second radiograph, although, you know, we're trying to do